Futures are rising as the Fed is set to begin its two-day meeting. Investors are anticipating potential stimulus action from the Fed as well as the European Central Bank. Economic data today includes June personal income and outlays. Also earnings from a slew of companies including Pfizer, Valero Energy and Take-Two Interactive. I'm Brittany Umar and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. So a quiet day yesterday as markets digested last week's gains well, but now futures are rising as investors are anticipating more potential stimulus from the Fed and ECB. We have the Fed starts its two-day meeting today, we have the Fed tomorrow, ECB Thursday, Jobs Friday, lots on the calendar, so where's your focus heading into trading today? You just gave like a day-to-day -day plan of a <laughs> lot going on. So at this point, what I want to focus on is, is the market action. And yesterday, to me, was an important day. A lot of people thought that the move that we had on Thursday, Friday was just a short squeeze, just a flash in the pan, it can't hold up. Then you look at the market yesterday, and we digested that pretty well. You come in today, futures are up a little bit, so this is day two, digesting a powerful move. So that is showing you some commitment. That's also showing you that you do have some shorts pent up in there, and there is some demand at higher prices. We're also seeing a lot of, of leading groups starting to break out. We're seeing participation from lagging groups. So, you know, coming into the Fed two-day meeting, I think you have to be more neutral to positive versus neutral to negative here. And speaking of those areas that we're seeing, um, yesterday we saw the sectors that are the least tied to economic growth post-healthy gains, telecoms, consumer staples, um, utilities, another one. Where's your focus on those sorts of areas today? What are the stocks to watch? I'm really not focusing as much on the laggard groups, but what you want to do is you want to see more participation because that helps sustain a rally. If you look at the chart, just say of the S&P real quickly, just to go over some short-term levels, you know, th this is the low that we put in, um, uh, what was this, June, what did we talk about, June 4th. And ever since then, we've been following this ascending channel all the way to the upside. I know it looked a little you know, shaky right here, and this also got me a little net short too, but then once the, the news came out from, from Draghi, you saw a big squeeze. And you could have switched gears right in the middle here. Said, you know what, I'm not going to be net short. I'm not going to roll them up. I'm going to go more neutral, look for some, some setups. And then from there, you had the move Friday, and then here's yesterday's digestion. So the longer we stay above this downtrend that we did break, okay, um, what was this on Friday, just say about 1375 to 1380, the higher the probability that if we get this QE news, you know, we start trading above uh, this 1391, we're going to see a move back above 1400, and then the old highs are, are not even 2% away. So I just think that if you're rolling up shorts, you better be careful. Um, if you have a macro thesis with a long-term plan, you're getting uh, rewarded for sticking to it and not being so gyrated by all the headlines. And if you're an intermediate trader, you know, if you're not ready for a portfolio approach, holding eight or nine stocks and having a, a, a hedge around it, then just tactically look for the setups because every single day it seems like we're getting more setups that you can make cash flow with. Uh, let's take a look at some stocks that have been acting well since earnings since it seems as though these might be the ones to jump on should futures open down. Let's start with a stock like Google, which added on Friday's big gain another eight handles before retreating yesterday. It is currently above all keep moving averages. So at what level would you dip in? Well, the, the tradable setup, if you didn't get involved for earnings, because, you know, as risk averse traders or as an intermediate trend trader, we don't typically take stocks into earnings. And if the last two quarters you did that with Google, you sidestepped, you know, a, a you know, pretty big down open. So finally this quarter they came out with good earnings. So if you had the same thesis and, and you didn't take any stock into earnings, you still had another entry. We talked about 618 to 620. If you were out of Google, that's your entry. Yesterday it hit as high as almost 642, a, a big trend line. And I do think at some point it's going to take out the highs of the year. We're going to see 700, 750 plus. If you look at the chart right here, you will see, you know, this was the, you know, remember early this year when it had the earnings shortfall, came in, retested this six, uh, was 560 level and held, came back up. You know, earnings disappointment again, you know, came back down, tested the support institutions, came in and supported this stock. And then you had, you know, the, the, the earnings come out this quarter. You, know, you had a, a nice move higher. We consolidated. So if you weren't involved, here is your entry right here around 618. You know, yesterday, short term, a small push through failure into this trend line where it traded above 
um, this sticks 35 and then back below it. But I, I think that's just uh, some profit taking. I think as long as it stays above this 620, you could accumulate in this area. And then at some point this year, probably closer to the fall, we're going to take out the highs of the year. We're going to take out this, you know, six, oops, sorry, this 670 or so. And then if we do so, you go back to the, the weekly and monthly charts, which is what got me excited in December, which is why this was my high beta name of the year, because we put a high in here. What was this? This was back in um, uh, 2007. So what are we? We're almost five years later with five more businesses besides search. So I think above this area, you know, the next big level is in the 700s. And if it gets there, it could even, you know, go higher than that. So I think Google needs to be on the radar. And Baidu is also holding up well, close above Friday's low yesterday. So how likely is it that higher prices are still in store going forward? You know, Baidu, I think it, it's, it's not as compelling. It's more of a trade and everything coming out of China. You have to take with somewhat of a grain of salt. And this one got battered and bruised. This wasn't as supported through the bad cycle, through the down cycle as Google was. But came out with earnings. And this is probably one of the most the quality stocks out of China. And it acted well. So we started talking about if, if it could stay above 115, you could buy it through 118, 120, and it hit 125. And now if you look at the chart, you will see, you know, you take a, a, a step back and you'll, and you'll see that it broke this uh, downtrend right here to the upside. This was on earnings and then it held it. So we talk about laggard stocks that get a catalyst through earnings. If they could hold this gap, you stay with it. Then you had a nice move. This was one of the levels we talked about. You know, it didn't power through, but a, a decent move through this 120. So now if you're not in Baidu, I think the next objective here is for to let it go sideways and for it to take back the 200 day. This one I wouldn't be aggressive with, but you know, it's acting better. So maybe buy dips and look for breakout type moves like you saw here above this 120 for cash flow. And eBay looking like a champ making a new high yesterday. Even when we do get a pullback, where would you add? Well, eBay also, it's the second quarter in a row. They, they impressed with earnings at a big gap up. It was viable both times after the gap up. This time it's not even waiting. Last time it took almost like six weeks or, or more to consolidate before it made new highs. This time you look at eBay and you look at the chart, you know, it, it's, it's fully showing power. This was two quarters ago, gapped up, held the gap during this entire time. And if you remember, this was your tactical play right here when it broke above this 41.50. Then it got a little faulty. You know, I thought that it should have held this area, but this was also during a very weak time in the market. But what did it do? It came back down and tested this gap and held. Look at this small little red dog reversal right there. You know, that's when it breaks below support, comes back above the previous day's low. So if you did get out when it didn't hold here, this 38.50 was your entry. And then, you know, you had earnings, which was a big surprise. And if you don't take stocks into earnings, you could have waited because if you're risk averse, you sidestep a lot of craziness during earnings. And here you go. This was the gap from earnings, you know, went sideways. And here for a day trade, a lot of guys are looking at this thing above uh, 44.65. And here we are a new high. So if you're an investor in eBay and you've been staying the course, you're getting rewarded as a trader. There's tactical strategies here. So there is a lot to like in this market if you just leave your opinions at the door and, <laughs> and just be a little bit more of a not that you don't have to be an optimist, just be a realistic and trade the action versus all the headlines. A little objectivity. Exactly. <laughs> now, Amazon is another one that digested last week's gain well, still showing leadership trading above all key moving averages. So it's become a real one to watch. Yeah, and this one, I, I was a little unsure going into earnings, and you didn't really have to go into earnings also, because after the earnings came out, stock was trading like two, you know, 205. You know, there were guys in my office trading it after hours, some long, some short. But then once it went positive after hours and absorbed what was perceived as light earnings, the action told you it could go higher. Don't be short, be flexible. And then there was another price pattern that we've been talking about between like 228 and 230. It went above that after hours and Friday. Now, if you look at the chart, you know, and, and not just what everyone's saying, you know, you see here on earnings day, even though it was perceived to be light, it broke above this last resistance area. Nice move. Yesterday, like most of the other high beta names, had a bit of a doji. No big deal. Look where it was, a 215 all the way to 240. Why not rest a little bit? Went to 240.74. So right now, I'd like to see it go sideways to absorb this move. And then I do think, you know, if market holds in there, this is one of your go-to stocks at some point. This high here of 246 gets taken out. And it's nice to see that a lot of these high beta names can provide leadership, which would help a market rally in the fourth quarter. And Qualcomm recently broke out of the downtrend that had been in control since April, has been acting well ever since, and it's currently trading above the 200 day. So how can traders play this one? Well, this one also, it was, it was one of the stocks I held during the whole first quarter. 
and then it started to get a little toppy and got out of the way. So it shows you how you can get out into strength and then you could rebuy when the patterns reset up. And again, you didn't have to earn, you know, earn this. You didn't have to hold this into earnings. You could have waited for the setup after. So if you look here at the chart of Qualcomm, you will see this was the last earnings report or something happened here that was negative. Um, and once it didn't fill this gap, that was your exit or that was your sign to get out of the way. And then it, it continued in the downtrend. You didn't have to hold through this melees. And then here was your earnings. All right, it actually filled the gap a little bit more than you would have liked because of the, you know, the sector uh, with a lot of the, the talk of uh, the push out on iPhone 5, no one really knew. And then once it really held above this small downtrend around 56, that's when you could have got interested. And then as it started to break above this little wedge formation above 58, you had a nice entry there. So now at this point, you know, it's at, it's at some pretty big resistance, couldn't push through yesterday. I think this is something to watch, to buy on dips. It's now above the moving averages and it's something to stick with for the rest of the year, especially considering that I do think iPhone 5 it will be out in September and that'll help this company going into the next few quarters of earnings. All right, well, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with metals in front of Big Ben. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. My name is Pete Renzulli, Chief Marketing Officer of T3Live.com. Really, really excited about introducing you to and inviting you to the first T3 Live Active Trader Summit. There's going to be a ton of great content, but the number one reason you want to come is you want to be able to network and associate with other like-minded people who have a burning desire to learn how to be a trader. So I'm going to ask you to make a trade. Trade one Saturday for some of your time to come down and learn strategies, tactics, techniques, and Put some faces to the people that you see in the virtual trading floor in T3 Live and learn to take your trading bigger. Learn how to be a better trader than you are now. Learn the strategies. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go to T3Live.com and register. If you would like to join us at the post-event cocktail reception, you can also upgrade to either premium or VIP. That's up to you, but either way, please take advantage of the general admission. Two free tickets, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, bring a wife, bring a girlfriend, maybe bring both, but come down and expect to have a great time. Gold is in focus as investors hope for potential QE3, which would be bullish for gold prices. Let's start with the GLD, looking as though it's anticipating QE3 possibly being announced, obviously liking the comments from the ECB too. So at what levels could we see the GLD really gain some momentum? I think we've been at the spot probably five or six times or more over the, over the last like two months. And every time it gets to the door and starts knocking, it gets slammed. So it, it always changes at some particular point, And as this pattern has gotten tighter, it's more prone to really change some character. And if you look at the chart of the GLD, you will see ever since the high that was put in uh, back here in what last September, almost what was this, a year ago, we've been in, trapped in this downtrend. Here's your macro downtrend, and here's your lower level intermediate downtrend. You know, if you follow me, we've been talking about this many times. So here we are with your close up. You know, we, we talked last week how it changed a little character when it showed relative strength, when the euro, you know, continued to go lower, but we gapped above 155 and held it. And now we're hovering right in front of the 200 day, right in front of this trend line. I think if we could scream through 158, 158 half, the last shorts here that we're hoping for a break below the 148.50, which never happened, will get squeezed. And you could have a, a pretty, I would say, uh, what, a frisky type move to the 165 area. So above 158, 158 half, you, you hold it. You know, Big Ben says QE. All of a sudden, you have a nice trade up to 164. And I do think that that, that could happen. So I'm going to be watching that very, very closely. First time I'm not anticipating it because the last few times I've anticipated, I've gotten hurt. So I'm going to wait for it to be in motion and miss a little bit and wait for the volume and confirmation. Okay. Well, the macro downtrend for the GDX is still in place, but this one is showing some signs of momentum. What are the levels to watch here? See, I, I, with, the, with the miners, I, they're always tricky. And you try and pick even the best of the best, like a Newmont. You know, you just always see these headlines and every time they look good, you get a little bit beat up. Here, a lot of people keep asking me about the miners and like, what could I do? I want to get involved. You know, I think you stay away unless you really, you know, follow a company closely and you have stops, but a lot of it happens after hours. So if you want to have exposure to them, at least with the ETF, it's a mixture of, of the group. And if you look here at the, at the chart, um, you know, after the, the low is made in May, you had a rally back to retest this intermediate trend line. It's been following it lower. Here we held higher versus that May low. Um, yesterday, you did have somewhat of a strong day. Okay, close near the highs in anticipation. I guess if you, if you, you know, for this to really change, 
it has to really start getting above 4650, which is a long way off. So if you want to be in some and anticipated, okay. But I, I just think that you have to be a little careful. I'd rather see you lighter in you know in the in the miners versus you know the GLD, which I do think is more liquid and it's a little bit easier to trade. And the SLB has been acting well as well. Is it worth taking a look at here? Yeah, there's a lot of silver fans out there. And yesterday, silver was actually stronger than gold. So every now and then they, they switch who's, who's leading who. Typically, gold is the leader um, versus silver, but silver has been so bad and unbruised. So lately, it's been coming off the lows, held big support just like gold. So the question is, can it get follow through? Traders love follow through. You don't like, you know, push through failures. If you look at the high here in silver, you know, this has been under pressure ever since that parabolic move. Remember traders, we had a, <laughs> this was a tough one. Remember it was going parabolic and I think a lot of guys got squeezed out. So it shows you that, you know, if you have a thesis of silver short, the question was, could you stay solvent until it finally hit the fan, which it did. And since then you have a high, here's a lower high. Here's another lower high. So your macro trend is all the way up here for silver. And then your intermediate trend that we've been tracking for more short term tactical guys is just starting to break above. So I think if we can start getting above 2760 with the same kind of authority that I just talked about with the GLD, I do think that there is a trade here to a, at least you know, the $30 level, which would be a, a nice move for the summer and, and put a little money in the piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good thing. <laughs> now, let's do some quick hits here. Visa looking great after in earnings, hitting a new high yesterday. Any advice on how to approach this one as MasterCard gets ready to report earnings? I think Visa's already out, and if MasterCard's a little soft, a, a dip in Visa will most likely be viable. Great macro hold. This is why we talk about you know new issues in the past five years. They typically uncover the biggest winners. If you look at the chart of Visa, you know it's above all the moving averages. It broke out. I think it was downgraded like four times here. Wonder if they were trying to steal your stock. You go to the monthly chart here and look at this. It came public. What was this? 2008 Grand Slam home run winner. You know you look at the chart pattern here. This is why I try and uncover pivot points after new issues come out, and this being one of them right here when it broke above this area, which was about 95, 97. If you got involved then after you saw the institutional interest here, here's your cup, didn't even really build a handle. You know, you're up uh, a pretty nice amount of money. What is this, like almost 40%? and uh, you've probably been able to tactically trade it as well. Let's talk Walmart, your retail <laughs> stock pick of the year. Give yourself a little pat on the back because <laughs> it's actually now hit all macro objectives from what you called on street signs in December. So what's next for this stock? I think people are just like taken back. They can't believe it continues higher because people forgot that it was in a decade range absorbing one of the best moves in the 90s. And that's the only reason why I chose Walmart is I looked at the, the monthly and weekly patterns the same way you know I tried to do with Google but Google is just starting now and you know once it got above 62 to 64 you know you put a little bit of the economy in there that people are trying to save money you can go to Walmart and get everything everyone's a little cost conscious people getting smarter and pow you line that with the technicals and here's a chart of Walmart this was the level we talked about I said we get above 62 to 64 we could see almost 75 ish okay and here was your first move consolidated here you could have been a buyer above 69 for your second move then it started to get a little wishy-washy, that one big down day in there, but then it held in fine, another flag type pattern. And then for momentum above 73, you're now at 74.90. You go to the monthly chart, reason you know I was very, very bullish on this is because look at this, look at the amount of consolidation. People called it pain, you can call it pain, but this was really just institution consolidation. And then finally it broke above and there's your move. And look at the consolidation that had to happen, because look at the size of this move in the 90s. So we saw, we've been seeing a lot of that in the mega caps, and that's a lot of reason why the S&Ps are so strong, because these mega caps you know, are, are acting well, and plain vanilla mutual funds are in there buying it, versus the cute, you know, shorty, smart hedge funds that think they could just be short everything. <laughs> well, we touched on <laughs> Apple before, but let's talk the stock has reclaimed its 100-day, filled the earnings gap. Where's the next level to watch? Um, I would say now really like 615 to 620. Um, if you sidestep the, the earnings, which were a little bit light, you saved yourself 30 points, but you got to make sure you get back in. And we talked about two strategies. Talked about one, if we break below 570, there could be more downside that would be viable. Or if we break above 580, 70 or 580, 80, the, the earnings gap will be filled. And if you look at the chart here, it took <laughs> well, three days for that to happen. Here is your, your gap down, went sideways, held uh, this bigger support. I was hoping to get it a little bit cheaper, but it did not take place. You know, then once it triggered above this on Friday, you know, which was what, what I said, 580, 80, you then had a gap to fill. So here was day one, day two. And then yesterday they started talking about 
iPhone 5 September 12th, and I said that would be the buzzword. We get iPhone in September, all of a sudden everyone's going to be piling back in for the pent-up momentum, and now we're right back above 600. I think the stock's right around here. So with a bit more time, I think we get another tradable move, and it should set in motion, you know, that's 615 to 620. And then the highs of the year in Apple, in my opinion, are not in. I still think you see, you know, who knows, 680 to 720. All right, and Las Vegas stands adding to gains yesterday. What's your game plan here? Game plan here is this is a totally different trade. This one put a top in. It's been in the downtrend. It's been a weak stock. Finally, they came out with earnings, and they were, they were pretty bad. But it was just like a lot of other bad uh, earnings out there, a lot of it's priced in. So from, you know, the highs here, if you look at the chart of, you know, 60 or so, this was, remember, this little red dog reversal right here. And then once it broke 55-ish, I'm like, guys, you know, love them and leave them. It's, it's done for a little while. Then finally, you saw um, on earnings a push below major support, and you saw volume that showed me capitulation. So if I put my volume in, we talked about it that day. I said, look at the volume that came in. That Look where it was. And look at this move to the downside. Um, I'm sorry, I still have a lot of scribble scrabble in here from when I was talking about it. And look at this capitulation volume right there. That means, you know, finally the shorts covered, uh, washed up this and that, went long, said be long LVS. I think I even tweeted about it, you know, versus the low here. Friday was a little wishy-washy, but never went below the low. Then yesterday went as high as 38. I think if it can consolidate above 36 for the next few days, I think you could add to it above 38.29 and we see a move back to at least 40. Then who knows, maybe even get a little bit more traction considering you know, where their stock came from you know, in the high, high levels up here at 60. So at this point, it's just a laggard trade, just something tactically, so something to do for cash flow. And JP Morgan retreated 3% yesterday, gave back its 200 day. Could that now become resistance? Yeah, I think it's resistance. I, I don't, I'm not, everyone got really worried about it yesterday. It was downgraded yesterday. I think with the size of the move, it's actually acting okay. It's not, none of these banks are going to be barn burners. They're just going to have some nice moves. I think you'd be in tier one. A few of them, you know, the regionals are actually acting better than others. But yesterday, this is what the bears were pointing to all day. And, and if you look at it really in hindsight, what's the big deal? Okay, you, you know, here is the low when they finally came out with the loss, came back up to resistance, came back, retested the trend line. Um, and then finally broke through right here yesterday. What did it do? Inside day tested it. So if it stays above this 35.90, above this, actually it could have even went down to 35.50. I think it's fine. We're going to work our way into the gap. It's just not going to be as fast as some of the bulls want. So just forget you have it. And I think on dips, it's viable because chasing the banks, besides Goldman Sachs, which I have to show you, you know, had, had a, you know, a pretty um, spirited move off this lower level. And now this too, small little inside day in the, in the, in the banks. And again, I'm, I'm starting to talk a little bit more than I probably <laughs> should, but here's the FAS, okay, which is directional for the banks. All, all, all in all, you know, coming into resistance, going sideways above the moving averages. If the banks do stay above, or this stays above this 87 or so, I think that you're gonna get another move through resistance and that'll overall be a big help to the, to the markets. Always got to have one long hit in our quick hits, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. So you like wrote me in. <laughs> Tie it around the neck. Job, folks. <laughs> um, so we do have a lot on our plate today and the rest of the week, as we talked about. So what's your focus heading into trading today? My focus is, do we continue to hold up and where can we tactically make money? You know, look on days of digestion, you look for relative strength, you look for relative weakness and you trade them accordingly. I unfortunately have not chosen a portfolio approach in the past few days because it's a summer. I have my Ironman in less than two weeks. I've been a little bit more out of the office than I, than I usually am over the summer. So for me, I'm doing what's working for me, and that's just being tactical, taking some cute shorts, some cute longs, looking for relative strength. I'm not, you know, I don't have the brain power right now to hold eight stocks like I did during the first quarter with the hedge. So I'll wait to do that if the market continues to be acting well over the fall. So for me, I'm going to see how we handle resistance. You know, we talked about, you said, can there be you know, a sell the news phenomenon. That could be. So I would say if you're long, don't fall asleep behind the wheel. But if you've been rolling up your shorts since that June low, you know, you, you probably could have saved yourself some pain and even reshorted at a higher level versus getting squeezed out through levels. And right now that level on the spiders, I believe is 139, like 35 to 139.40, which was yesterday's high. We start getting above that, guys are gonna have a lot of decisions to make if they're rolling up those shorts. And with that said, happy trading everyone and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.